You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.pagosity.tv. Your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.pagosity.tv now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of September 17th, 2017. The podcast that blesses the rains down in Africa. This is your host, Shane Killian, and this week, give it up for a new co-host, John Peterson. What's up, all you lovely peoples? <laughs> you want to tell us a bit about yourself? All right. I am a Spurg, a gamer, a writer, and a lover of all things smart. And hater of all things stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling there. What sort of things have you written? I have written horror raw move sets, SOTW move. I have a deviant art, is what I'm trying to say. It's Ask the Angel of Souls. So if you want to pop in and ask me a few questions here or there, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Give me a link and I'll put it in the show notes. Say no more. All right, let's delogonate the news of the bogus. Yes, let's. And we'll start off with yet another myth psychopathic statists like to spew over the death and suffering in a disaster. They never seem to let that opportunity go to waste, do they? No, they don't, Shane. No, they don't. The idea that we need government to help people in a disaster because capitalism and private sector forces are just too selfish and greedy to do it. <sighs> Except that with Harvey, we saw exactly what we saw with Katrina, which is what we saw with Andrew and all sorts of other disasters. The private sector came in to help, and government stopped them. This story centers around two Illinois men who, out of the goodness of their hearts, drove 16 hours in an RV to bring supplies such as water to people in Vidor, Texas, who were devastated by Hurricane Harvey. As an Illinoisan myself, whoever you guys are, you deserve... An award for an act of epic level coolness that I haven't seen since, well, ever. Well, I know, I gotta say, you're not paying attention there because, you know, all sorts of people were jumping in to help when people were waterlogged. People were just coming out in boats and helping other people. I mean, it's actually kind of amazing all of the outpouring of kindness that was happening. Of course. And now they had brought two giant buggies with them capable of navigating waters to dry land, and they were in the process of bringing four people to safety when they were stopped by law enforcement, and there's video of the whole thing. An officer stopped the vehicle, asked the driver to step out. When asked, he gave his reason, quote, because I said so. And the officer went on to say that if the driver, whose name was Jared Kirkendall, didn't step down, he wouldn't be allowed to leave. In case you guys couldn't hear, that was the sound of my palm hitting my forehead. The officer said that the driver wasn't allowed to continue doing this because he didn't have his ID with him and he didn't have any proof of insurance. I'm sorry, but helping people is not against the law, guys. It's an act of humanity. Seriously, why do these statists care more about themselves and their nanny state than of average Joes like you and me? It's like, sense, this makes none. So he told him that he could go and that he wasn't allowed to come back. And the officer said, quote, we appreciate that you're here, but we've had enough. Really? And by the way, this article misquotes him as saying we've got enough. Listen to the video. I'm pretty sure he says we've had enough. So James Hartwell posted the video to Facebook and said, quote, so this just happened. Jared Kirkendall and Scott Green was told that they have to leave Vidor because they're not needed here. But yet they are doing more than any of the law enforcement is doing here. This is the biggest crock of bullshit I've ever heard. Fucking power trip. Helping people and get treated like that. Oh, and as you could see, he was a total asshole. He being the police officer. Jared, Scott, we're not the MVPs for laying out your act of kindness. You're the real MVPs. The Vidor Police Department said that the officer in the video was not one of theirs and that they are grateful to the volunteers. And it is the same story that we see every time. Individuals like Kirkendall and Green, as well as companies like Walmart and Harris Teeter, they do everything they can to divert supplies to where they're needed, often donating them 
only to be turned around by FEMA or some other government stooge so that they can then go on and complain about how little supplies they have to give everyone. I'm sorry, but this don't fly with me. It's just another disgusting example of how the cult of statism operates. Ah, yes, the infamous cult of the omnipotent state. Let's give it up for them. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. It's unthinkable that slavery and forced child labor could continue here in the 21st century, but in many places, it does, trapping 45 million workers into bondage. This story focuses on forced labor in the sugar industry. Hershey, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and many other companies that make products containing sugar depend on supply chains that aren't completely transparent, and they might very well be unwittingly supporting forced labor in the production of sugar. I don't have a snarky remark for that one. Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can say about that, uh, other than how horrible it is. Now, the coalition Know the Chain exists to try to expose which supply chains involve forced labor and alert the companies when they're supporting slavery. But this does comprise a risk for these companies because it's not an easy thing to change an entire supply chain. There are expenses involved, and the alternatives are probably more expensive than where they were getting the sugar from before. Which means it's just making things worse when you take one big alternative and completely shut it off to them. Something which would not only be cheaper and more sustainable, but also guaranteed not to use forced labor and even provide jobs right here in the United States. And the reason why it's been cut off to them is solely because of the anti-GMO movement. Ah, uh, yes. The guys who think Monsanto is worse than the devil and that one guy from Onimusha whose name escapes me at the moment. Well, see, sugar cane doesn't grow well everywhere. But genetically modified sugar beets can provide a good amount of sugar from beets that will grow in many more places. Sadly, food companies more and more are finding themselves having to deal with state and federal regulations involving GMOs. And they often get around this by having the non-GMO label on their products. But that means getting their sugar from cane even though it's all the same sucrose crystals. I mean, it's the exact same molecule in exactly the same structure. Jeez. But the result is artificially high demand for cane sugar, which means pretty much getting it from its two main suppliers, India and Brazil. Those two countries, as well as smaller sugar-producing countries like Guatemala, Pakistan, Bolivia, and the Dominican Republic, have been known to produce and process sugar using forced or bonded labor. Forced or bonded labor? Well, forced labor is slavery, and bonded labor is convicts. I learned something new. That, that's, that's generally the distinction. There's some um, ambiguities there, and sometimes people mean something a little different like debt bondage, but that's generally the idea. Know the Chain delivered this criticism of the companies, quote, No company in the case study was able to provide an example of a remedy offered to workers in their sugarcane supply chains, an indication that this is an area where companies still have a long way to go. But there is one easy solution. Stop this anti-science GMO crap 
which has no basis in logic, evidence, or rationality, and let them use sugar beets. And we've talked about all sorts of problems with the pro-organic anti-GMO movement. Now, here's one more. It helps keep millions of workers trapped in slavery. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.bogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. Back home, parents of high school teenagers in New Jersey were outraged when 75 students were detained and had their rights violated when the schools forced them to provide blood and urine samples under threat of suspension. The reason? At a football game, officials found one beer can under the bleachers. Fourth Amendment? What's that? (laughs) Well, of course, they're claiming it was done for the sake of child safety, which apparently is an exception to the Bill of Rights. It's not in my copy of the Constitution, but it seems to be in theirs. Which they written in crayon. (laughs) And even though there wasn't any evidence that the beer can even belonged to a student and not another attendee, The 75 students were detained in a classroom where their parents were called and told that if the students didn't comply with the test, they would be automatically assumed guilty. Yes, they actually said that, guilty until proven innocent, of a crime committed by at most one of them. Randolph High School student and Class of 2018 President Nate Pangaro wrote on Facebook, quote, Before the game could begin, an administrator went to the front and told everyone to be quiet. He announced that he found an open beer can on the ground that rolled to him and that someone should confess to whose it was before everyone was taken in for a breathalyzer test. No one confessed, so people went into the school each row at a time to be tested. And this is why I am glad I am out of the public school system. The number of students that were required to be tested overwhelmed the town's medical systems. Nearby emergency departments at Dover and Morristown weren't even given any warning. The students were just sent there. The parents of the students believed that their constitutional rights and the rights of their children had been violated, and the parents protesting their child's innocence were mostly right. Of the 75 students, only five tested positive for alcohol, and there's no evidence that any of those five had alcohol on school grounds. For once in my life, I'm speechless, man. In fact... Those five may have been completely innocent. I couldn't find any information on which specific test they were using, but all of these tests can generate false positives. I did find an article on WebMD saying that drug tests generally produce false positives in 5-10% to of cases, and since 6.7% of these students tested positive, that's right in the expected range for false positives. This is reason number 5,872 why public schools are crazy. Because they have this zero tolerance of pretty much everything. It's like, become the Borg or you're not one of us. Yeah. But I mean, it's even this just almost religious acceptance of these scientific tests without understanding them. Like, you had school board candidate Christopher C. Treston. He said, quote, Let me be very clear. Teenage drinking is a serious problem. And it did, in fact, occur at our school on Friday night. Our process of preventing backpacks, bottles, and cans from entering the stadium broke down. In addition, some number of students arrived intoxicated. We owe it to the community to identify such students and to protect them in the community. But we also need to do it in a way that protects the rights and dignity of the student body, 
when the accused but innocent outnumber the guilty 16 to 1, we probably did it wrong. So that last part of his comment is right on, but as for the rest, it's what I was just talking about. The things that he said, in fact, occurred, may not have, but people say, oh, well, there's this scientific test and it says X, so X must be true. It doesn't work that way. But this is why rules of evidence, as well as the appropriate skepticism of the evidence, is so important, and why it's doubly important to make sure that no one's rights are violated. I really think that this story needs a lot more coverage rather than just a couple of guys on a computer. Yeah, well, that's kind of this podcast. I really want to go through and point out all the things that no one else is that really need to be pointed out, but then, you know, it's up to the listeners to say, hey, this deserves more coverage and to pass it on to other people. So, I mean, all we can do is the best we can do. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the Internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the Internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your Internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to bang our heads against this week's biggest bogan emitter. And for the third time since being inaugurated president, it goes to Donald Trump. This time for being silly enough to claim that his border wall will stop illegal drugs coming into the country. You know what would stop the, our illegal drugs, Trumpy boy? Not the wall, but more like, oh, I don't know, ending the drug war? Well, now you're just being radical. Yeah. Trying something that'll actually work. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm not being radical. I'm being rational, Shane. <laughs> Big difference. I don't think they can tell the difference anymore. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, they need to stop getting their information from movies and TV shows. They mostly show drugs being brought over the border, out in the desert, in the middle of nowhere by the Mexican cartels, generally while killing people in horrific ways. The fact is... According to a May report by the DEA, most illegal drugs are not brought in by the cartels, and of those that are, they're most likely to be transported by plane and by boat, which a wall is not going to stop. Unless you put anti-aircraft artillery or Coast Guard dudes near said wall. But now I'm just being completely crazy. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to man the wall. Uh, but when they do cross the border... They don't do it in secret out in remote areas. They go straight through the border crossing and they conceal them in tractor trailers and other vehicles and go right past the border guards. But that report didn't stop Trump from claiming in a joint news conference with Finland's president, quote, The drugs are pouring in at levels like nobody has ever seen. We'll be able to stop them once the wall is up. Well, if the DEA is correct, it won't stop heroin because, quote, the majority of the heroin available in New Jersey originates in Colombia and is primarily smuggled into the United States by Colombian and Dominican groups via human couriers on commercial flights to the Newark International Airport. The 24-page report also talks about Dominican trafficking groups and the variety of ways they bring cocaine into the U.S., including just filling suitcases with it to be brought by passengers and approved by inspectors who accept bribes and sometimes are even sent through the mail. And Trump's wall is going to stop those methods. How? Exactly, yeah. And drugs coming in from the Bahamas or Venezuela 
are generally transported by boat to Miami. Puerto Rico is also a popular staging area due to its status as a U.S. territory. But yeah, I mean, the solution isn't anything resembling a wall. It's not even going to do anything. I mean, I'm with you in the insane war on drugs, and that'll stop it. But the DEA was saying, look, the only way you're going to make any effect on this, short of that, I, <laughs> short of ending the war on drugs, I assume, is specifically targeting their networks by law enforcement. Traffickers get money from the war on drugs. So, like I said, ending the war on drugs, smart idea, Trump. But, I mean, they can just bribe the law enforcement officials, because that's what they're doing anyway. Yeah. But, I mean, it, you know, trying to look at all the people coming across the border, you're not even looking for a needle in a haystack. You're looking for a needle in a haystack where the needle isn't. The needle's over somewhere else. Yeah. So all of that makes Trump, once again, this week's biggest bogani emitter. If you're going to shop online, use our special links to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to Amazon.Pagosity.tv, and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. If you haven't used the mobile app in the last 12 months, or even at all, go to Get5.Pagosity.tv on your phone or tablet and get $5 off your order of $10 or more. Go to Prime.Pagosity.tv for a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle, go to Kindle.Pagosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited, read over 1 million books, and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. You can go to music.pagosity.tv and get a free 30-day trial of Amazon Music Unlimited with access to Amazon's entire library of 10 million songs, ad-free and with unlimited skips, and even download to listen offline. All great ways to help this podcast simply by shopping at Amazon. And now let's drop a piano on this week's Idiot Ah, you might have a little work to do to give Daniel some competition, but that wasn't bad. <laughs> Thank you. And it's a week of three first as PETA takes their third one. Ah, yes, PETA. What has been said about those guys that hasn't been said already? And this time, they protested and tormented a Yale researcher who's trying to find a way to ease suffering of birds. Seriously? Yeah. They're doing that? Postdoc Christine Latin worked in a raptor rehabilitation center where she would try to nurse birds back to health. She noticed that some birds responded differently to stress depending on the species. Red tail hawks would be calmer, but Cooper's hawks bounced around their cage and hardly ate. So she began researching different ways birds reacted to stress and responded to things like oil spills. At Yale, she pioneered the use of medical imaging techniques like positron emission tomography, the PET scans, to study how stress affects the birds. She's hoping this technology will allow her to study sparrows and how they're stressed out without euthanizing them, since without imaging, the only way you can make that determination is by autopsy. So she's reducing stress of animals and saving lives. Who could possibly have a problem with that? Only PETA, Shane. Only PETA, yes. They made a web post titled, Tell Yale University to Stop Tormenting Birds. PETA members started emailing her saying things like, You should kill yourself, you sick bitch. And posted messages to Facebook and Twitter saying things like, What you're doing is so sick and evil. I hope someone throws you into the fire. PETA has launched three formal protests against her, including showing up at her home. She's saying she's getting 40 to 50 messages a day. Quote, Every time I went to check my email or Twitter, my heart started racing. I worried there might be another message. I worried about the safety of my family. This has been one of the worst summers of my life. I care about these birds, and I'm really proud of my science. It makes me really upset to have it twisted and used against me. Oh, and by the way, SJWs, this is what online harassment really looks like. Let me handle these guys. Okay. Listen here, PETA. I get that your heart was in the right place with this, but threatening somebody is a good enough way for yourselves to get thrown into the crosshairs of 
me, Hoodie, shoutouts to him, and many others. So please, PETA, wear your dunce hats and wear them with pride. Meanwhile, her colleagues and science reporters around the country are taking steps to make sure her side of the story gets out and this doesn't ruin her fledgling career. More than 80 scientific researchers have voiced their support for her and condemnation of PETA. Good on them. Latin says there's no reason PETA should oppose what she's doing. Quote, I'm trying to reduce the number of animals used in research, protect endangered species, and help animals in general. PETA says, We'll stop the moment Yale says no more and not one minute before that. But Latin's response is, quote, I am not going to stop. PETA is not going to win. Blood in the water, Shane. Blood in the water. Way to go, Latin. PETA is not going to win as the things they do become more and more moronic. What they will do is become named this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this. In the time I've been speaking, over 18 million people have died of stress. Edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come join the discussion at born.bogosity.tv and feel free to send a question, statement, news article, or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please donate using the links on the website or the QR codes in the thumbnail or become a patron at patreon.bogosity.tv and get the podcast and YouTube videos early and without ads or promos. Thank you for listening, and thanks to John Peterson for joining me. Pleasure as always, and remember, the war for sanity is a never-ending battle. Until next time, here's a quote from Colin Carter. The original founder of Greenpeace came out in favor of GM crops, and then he got kicked out of that organization because he recognized that, look, this is actually an environmentally friendly technology that reduces the chemical load. The average consumer is unaware of the environmental benefits. You only hear about the possible environmental risks. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial Notary this 4.0 International License. Bogosity. Want answers to creationist claims against evolution? Would you like to know more about evolution yourself, or even engage creationists more directly, with actual peer-reviewed sources to back you up? My book, How Evolution is Scientific, is designed to show the basics of evolutionary theory and how it is so well supported using the scientific method. It's impeccably sourced, with references to the actual scientific material, and is arranged using the creationists' own criteria of what is scientific. Using their own arguments against them, see how evolution is scientific, but creationism is not. Based on observations, accurate predictions, logic, and evidence. Get answers to common creationist claims, and even a primer on abiogenesis, the start of all life. It's all in my book, How Evolution is Scientific, available at Amazon, and on Kindle, EPUB, and PDF as well. Get How Evolution is Scientific and Never Be Taken In by Creationists Again.